Welcome to Educator.com's SAT Vocabulary Unit. This lesson is on words 1 through 10 on our list of 100 useful SAT vocabulary words. All right, we're going to begin with a brief lesson overview. We're going to do a standard ways to improve your vocabulary spiel. So if you're, a little, if you're getting a little tired of these vocabulary lists or you want to do some work outside the course, here are some really good, easy ways to improve your vocabulary. In this lesson, we'll be covering 10 words, erroneous, prudent, frivolous, indignation, credulous, longevity, misconceive, context, forebode, and predilection. All right. Now, if you're looking for ways to improve your vocabulary beyond these lessons, there are several really basic ways. First one is read. Read things. Honestly, there is no better way to learn English vocabulary than to see these words used in context. That's how you'll be seeing them on the test, and that's really the best way to learn them. So what can you read? Read books, read magazines, read websites, and try to read things that are just a little bit above your usual vocabulary level. Where, pl things where you have to stop occasionally and go, hey, what does that mean? And figure it out from the context or look it up. Just occasionally don't start reading things in German or reading really dense technical texts that will make your head explode. No. If you enjoy reading a certain kind of book, for example, a certain kind of story, you might try reading older books in that genre that would have more advanced vocabulary or more archaic vocabulary. If you enjoy reading certain kinds of magazines or certain t uh, types of articles, then you might look for older books, older magazines, older collections of articles that cover the same subject but with a slightly different vocabulary. When in doubt, go for something a little bit older, a little more advanced, and a little bit more difficult. Secondly, listen. Yes, you really can learn vocabulary by listening. At least I hope you can with this course. Listen to the radio and not just the local rock and roll station. Listen to the news stations. Listen to public radio. Listen to anything that makes you think a little bit. You'll hear people use more advanced vocabulary in everyday conversation, and it will help you improve your vocabulary. Also, listen to audiobooks, particularly if you have difficulty actually looking at a page and reading. If you're dyslexic or have some other type of learning disability, audiobooks are great. There are actually some human brains that are wired to learn better through listening than through seeing things. So when I was building up my vocabulary as a kid, I listened to a ton of audiobooks, and to this day I can still hear narrators from those audiobooks in my head saying those words when I run into them in print. It helps me remember what they mean, helps me remember the context, and it just generally makes my vocabulary better. And finally, talk. What is this? You can improve your vocabulary by talking? Well, yes, you really can. Talk to your teachers and not just about whether something is going to be on the final. Actually, talk to them about the subject. Talk to them about anything that's interesting. Talk to educated adults. Talk to anybody that you know who has a more advanced vocabulary than you have or who's made a study of some particular area. Soak up that vocabulary. If they use a word you don't know, ask what it means. Most of the time, they'll be happy to tell you. Great ways to build up your vocabulary almost without effort. All right, our first word today is erroneous. It is an adjective, as you can tell by the yes ending, and it means containing or characterized by error or mistaken. So you see erroneous, think error, okay? It is connected to errors, of course, and also to errant. If you read any King Arthur stories when you were a kid, you might have uh, read about a knight errant, a knight who's going out and wandering around, solving people's problems and slaying dragons. Well, that's connected to error and erroneous, wandering, kind of getting off the right way to do things. Our example sentence for this word is, your report on wolverines was full of erroneous information. These relatives of the weasel do not actually sprout metal claws from their hands like the superhero. If you ever meet someone who actually does a report on wolverines and claims that they sprout metal claws, give them an F. All right, our second word is prudent. This is another adjective, meaning wisely careful, showing good judgment. It is connected to prudence, which is the quality of being prudent, the quality of being wise or careful. Uh, it's also a girl's name, so if you run into a girl named Prudence, don't make fun of her. It's actually a nice name to have. And also to the word prude, somebody who is uh, especially repressive or uh, sexually inhibited or various other things. So you hear somebody called a prude, that's actually the negative connotation of prudence or prudent. Now our example sentence, it was a prudent decision to carry jumper cables in the trunk of your car. When your battery died, you were able to get a jump start. It was wise, it was careful, it was clever of you to carry jumper cables in your car. Our third word is frivolous. 
I love this word. It's another adjective. There's the us ending again. It means of little weight or importance. Silly. Not really a big deal. Now, it has a secondary definition that is frequently used, especially in American English, meaning having no sound basis as in fact or law. So you might hear about a frivolous lawsuit. Frivolous is connected to frivolity, which means merriment, silliness, goofing around. Our example sentence, the frivolous lawsuit demanded a million dollars from a coffee shop after a customer spilled hot coffee on himself. This is, of course, a silly lawsuit since it's assumed if you're going to buy a cup of coffee, you can at least handle holding a cup and not spilling on yourself. But instead, you sue the coffee shop. It's kind of frivolous, it's silly, it's ridiculous, and it doesn't have a sound basis. So when you see frivolous, think of people suing over coffee. All right, our fourth word is indignation. It means it is a noun, our first noun of this lesson. You can tell by the T-I-O-N ending. A strong displeasure at something considered unjust, offensive, insulting, or biased. It is connected to indignant, which of course is the adjective form, and dignity. If you are indignant about something, then your dignity has been offended, and you draw yourself up to your full height, and you bluster at someone, I am indignant, okay? So, here's our example sentence. He was indignant at the suggestion that he had taken bribes and told anyone who would listen how honest he was and what a grave insult the accusation was. For some reason, when I see the word indignation or indig indignant, I sit up very straight and I start talking in a funny voice because that's how indignant people sound to me. All right, our fifth word is credulous. This is arguably my favorite SAT vocabulary word ever. It is an adjective, as you can tell by the yes ending, and it means ready to believe, especially on slight or uncertain evidence. If you are credulous, you're very gullible. It is connected to incredulous, which means you don't believe something. I am incredulous at this. I don't believe it. And it also means credulity, which it's connected to credulity, which means the quality of believing things. It's also connected to credit which is, you know, a credit card, you swipe it at the store, and basically the store is believing on the basis of your bank's guarantee that you can and will pay your bills. So once again, that cred meaning has something to do with belief. Now, the reason this is my favorite example. Sample sentence, the credulous pirates of Penzance believe the Major General was an orphan just because he said so. The reason I love credulous. The musical Pirates of Penzance is actually an operetta, and it's about these pirates who, among other things, are very, very credulous. They are the dumbest, silliest pirates you will ever meet. And among other things, they have a rule that if someone is an orphan, they won't steal their stuff, they won't make them walk the plank, they won't mess with them at all. Well, it's kind of gotten around that they do this, and so everyone they capture says he's an orphan. And at one point, a very important character, the Major General, uh, tells them that he's an orphan and therefore they can't kidnap his daughters, which is what they wanted to do. Well, later on, a character tells the Pirate King, the leader of the pirates, all about this. And the Pirate King says, Am I to understand that in order to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice upon our credulous simplicity? And he bellows really loud. And it's always a fun line. So every time you see credulous, think of pirates who will believe absolutely anything. All right, our sixth word is longevity. It just means long life or length of life. It is a noun. So if someone has great longevity, they have a very long life. Or you can talk about the longevity of a particular person or species, the length of life they typically have. Our sample sentence is, tortoises are well known for their longevity. Some have lived to be more than 200 years old. That's a pretty long-lived vertebrate. All right, our seventh word is misconceive. It is a verb, meaning to interpret wrongly or misunderstand. So there's our miss, which means not doing it right, and conceive, which means in some meanings to understand. So you're, mis you're conceiving wrongly, you're misconceiving. It is, of course, connected to misconception, and that's the word that's used in our sample sentence. The common misconception that cats always land on their feet can easily be disproved by anyone who's ever seen my cat tumble off the couch. It is a misconception that cats always land on their feet. Just watch my cat fall off the couch and you'll realize it's a wrong idea. The eighth word is context. Now this is a very important word for the SAT because you have to use a lot of vocabulary in context. You will inevitably run into a question that says, in the context of sentence 47, the word blank most nearly means, okay, so it helps to know what context means if you don't already. Context is a noun, and it means the parts before and after a statement that can influence its meaning. It is connected to subtext, which is what, what you do when you read between the lines. Now, when you see the word text, you, of course, think of words, you think of print, and con, in this case, means with. 
So the words that are with whatever you're looking at, just as subtext means the words that are under whatever you're looking at, the hidden meaning. So let's see context in a sentence. In the context of a conversation about baseball, it doesn't make any sense to start talking about touchdowns because, of course, there are no touchdowns in baseball. So, in the context makes no sense. When you see context, look at the words around it, the words with it. Our ninth word is forebode. Oh, that's a nice scary word. It is a verb meaning to predict, to warn, to forecast, or to foresee, especially something bad. It is connected to foreboding, which describes a sense that, you know, something bad is going to happen or something bad is happening around you. I've got a very bad feeling about this foreboding. We had a feeling of foreboding as we watched the black thunder clouds roll in over our cabin with its leaky roof. If you were in a cabin with a leaky roof, you really do not want it to rain. You have a feeling of foreboding. I've got a bad feeling about this. And finally, our tenth word is predilection. It is a noun meaning a partiality or preference. Okay, so somebody, somebody's a little bit partial to something, they have a habit of doing something, they have kind of a thing about it. It is oddly enough connected to the word diligent. Generally people with predilections are very diligent uh, or assiduous in pursuing those predilections. Our example sentence, my cousin has a predilection for telling tall tales, which means lies. He's always trying to convince somebody that he once caught a 20 foot long trout. Uh, those fish don't get that big. So there you have predilection. He has this habit of telling lies. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.